Amen. In the first gospel that we heard today, the gospel for Sunday, we hear this parable that our Lord tells. Just the verses just prior to this, what we find is that our Lord is with his 12 disciples, and he's with some women whom he healed, and they are taking care of his needs, and he is going about the countryside, we are told, preaching the good news, the glad tidings of the kingdom of heaven. Something which he has told us elsewhere cannot be located. It's not to be understood by a location that we can drive to. It's not to be located by GPS coordinates. But, he says, the kingdom of heaven is within you and it's in your midst. And then he tells this parable. Of course, we've heard this parable many times about the sower. And the disciples ask, what does this mean? And he goes on to explain it. And he explains that some will get this and some won't get this. And that's the same with us today. Some will see and hear <clears throat> what he is talking about, and some will not hear it. Some will hear it at a certain level of understanding. Others will hear it at a different level of understanding. We bring to what we hear when Scripture is proclaimed or when we read it our own what is called a hermeneutic. It means we bring to it our own view. And we put onto what we are reading and what we are hearing that view that we bring to it. And we can look certainly all across the world and see the different views that people bring to Holy Scripture. We can think, for example, of those who seek to follow Christ, but they look at Scripture, see it, and interpret it through a very literal lens, as if the Scriptures fell from the sky and were literally written out by our by God. There are others who understand the scriptures differently. That is, it is the recordings, the transmission of the experiences of people. And there are recordings of our Lord's teachings about the kingdom of heaven. What we usually bring to scripture when we hear it, is our own, I will call it, dualistic interpretation. We will listen to the scriptures. We will listen to the gospel. But we will listen to it as if I am here, and the Lord who is speaking is there. And this is the way we look at this is part of our own fallenness into conditioning. We look at everything as separate from us. We look at other people as separate from us. People of different uh, upbringings, different culture, even though St. Paul has reminded us, in Christ there is no Jew or Gentile. There is no male or female. Everyone is one. Humanity, the human being, 
is a human being, no matter what culture, no matter what their circumstances have been. There is a oneness to us that is shared by everybody else. That's why our Lord has said, you must love your neighbor as yourself. Because your neighbor is yourself. Your neighbor, neighbor has the same fundamental makeup as you. Conditions may be entirely different, but essentially the human being made in the image and likeness of God is the same. Not everyone realizes that. Because we have fallen so deeply into our own conditioning and our <clears throat> own separateness that often we just can't see. We just can't comprehend what it is our Lord is actually saying and what he's actually pointing to. Parables are these short little <clears throat> stories, short little things that are not in and of themselves what our Lord is meaning. They are pointing to something that he's actually meaning. The words themselves are not the reality he's pointing to. The reality that he is pointing to is something entirely different and distinct. And he says, some are going to get it, some are going to get what I'm pointing to, and some aren't. Have you ever had an experience where you've heard something, you've been taught something, you've had a certain perception, and then a few years later somebody comes along and they tell you essentially the same thing, but it happens that in the way they say it, or the, just the slant on a few different words, or the slant of hearing it in a different language, and all of a sudden we say, oh my gosh, that's what that means. I missed that all these years. What our Lord is pointing to what he is wanting us to see is a reality that is in him, that is carried on in him in the Holy Eucharist, and that is all about us. We pray, how many times do we pray? O oh, heavenly King, who art everywhere present, everywhere. How many times do we recite the creed? Creator of all things, visible and invisible, one God. And yet, we don't so often perceive that oneness. But we perceive ourselves as separate. And we can listen to we can listen to scripture as we did today. We can study it. We can say our prayers. And when we step outside of all of that, when we're alone and honest with ourselves, most often we can say, there's still a longing in me. The prayer isn't doing it. Reading the scripture isn't doing it anymore. Reading the lives of the saints isn't doing it anymore. There's something that I'm longing for. I'm longing for an experience, an actual experience of Jesus Christ. That's an experience that we find as we seek the kingdom of heaven in honesty and with a pure heart. 
At the end of the parable this morning, our Lord says, those who are honest and pure in heart are the ones who will find what I'm talking about. They are the ones who will bear the good fruit. And the first, and he also says, that's not easy to find. <clears throat> he says, the path is narrow, and there are few who find it. So if we want to discover the kingdom of heaven as an experience, an experience where we can say, ah, Christ lives in me. Christ lives in the world. Heaven is here in our midst. We tend to look particularly at the world today. Oh my goodness. Look what's happening in the world. And yet, beyond that, there is the ever-present, uncreated light of God and the mercy of God that shines all over. It's just that people don't see it. They don't realize it. They're consumed in their conditioning. They're consumed in their ignorance and their stupidity. Our Lord saw that on the cross. What did he say? Forgive these people. They don't know what they're doing. They're ignorant. He didn't condemn them. He was still present holding in himself the radiance, the divine love of the kingdom of God and extending it to them. It's not like he blew them off or he looked at those circumstances as different from himself, but he took all of that into himself without criticism, without anger, he absorbed it and ultimately transformed it. And that's what you and I are called to do. We are to be that same living presence of him. We are to be, as St. Paul said today in the epistle, St. Paul came to a place after persecuting Christians where he ultimately said, it is no longer I who live. Christ lives in me. He saw things completely differently. It has been said that the eyes of the flesh see the things of the flesh. The eyes of the spirit see the things of the spirit. Our life, our growth as a Christian is to go higher within ourselves than seeing just the things of the flesh. But to that dimension within ourselves where we see the things of the spirit, we see the spiritual reality we see the kingdom of heaven. We see that radiant light. We sense that, ah, oh, there is a warmth to this kingdom of heaven, no matter what the circumstances are. And when we can go through that gate and discover that realization, we discover that there is no death. That is eternity. And that eternity is not down the road. That eternity is now. That eternity, that kingdom of heaven is in our midst, wherever we happen to be. 
And when we can see that, we have died <coughs> before we die, and then we never die. We live in eternity always. And we discover what our Lord meant when he said, you must lose your life in order to find it. So may it be that when we hear the teachings of our Lord, we stop and we reflect deeply on, as the disciples were questioning, what are you talking about? What does it mean? And get to that point where we see that our Lord is pointing us to that kingdom of heaven, that peacefulness, that blessedness that is ours here and now. The blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love for mankind, always now and ever, and unto the